Welcome! In this series of videos, we will look at software add-ons for the PowerBasic Windows compiler. Today, we will look again at the My Little Grid product and adding additional formatting to your grids in your Windows client application. This was our application at the end of the last video. We have a dialog on which we've placed a grid, and the grid has two tabs. A tab for this week, and a tab for next week. Each of these tabs is showing different data. Now we'd set the day columns up as tick boxes, and we'd set the activity column as being a drop down list. And when we click on the grid action button, it actually saves the information to a configuration file on the disk, so that the next time the application loads, we can populate the grid with the same information. What we're going to do today is not any functional change to the application, but we are going to change it so that each alternate row will be coloured. So it will have a coloured background to make it easier to read the data on the rows. Now, how can we actually perform this? If we have a look where we set the grid up in our dialog. This is where we issued the control add statement to add my little grid to the dialog. Now, my little grid has a number of configuration settings set in this string here. Now, one we haven't spoken about much already is the Z setting. Now, we at the moment have got this set for Z1, which means we're going to create an array to allow individual cell formatting. Now we haven't used this feature yet, but this is what we're going to use today. If you set your grid up with Z1, it allows you to change the grid cell by cell for formatting. So if we have a look in our event handler, our callback function, this is where in the initial dialog, we populated the grid from disk. Now what we're going to do in here is after we've loaded each of the grids for the this week tab and for the next week tab, we're going to reformat the grid so that each alternate row is coloured. So we're going to create a new generic function in our library to perform this function. And we're going to call this function color bank grid rows. Now it will operate on an entire grid so we'll have to pass it the grid handle and it will perform the function on whatever the currently selected tab on that grid is. So exactly the same line of code will work perfectly well for each of the tabs. So let's create this new generic function in our library. This is where we're storing all the generic routines that operate on my little grid. Now, our new function will take a single parameter as a D word, which is the handle to the grid itself. So the first thing to do is that since this is a generic function, it will be operating on a range of grids, different sizes, different widths. So the first thing to do is to work out just how big the grid is. Now, we already have some code that does this. If we have a look in the get rows and grid function, this section of code here will actually return the number of rows and the number of columns. We're just going to borrow that code and paste it into our new function. So what it's doing here, it's using the send message command to send to our grid the get row column total count. And it will return a single value and from that we're pulling out of that long a high and a low value, the low value being the rows and the high value being the columns. So this tells us how many rows and columns are in the grid, which is a good beginning. This first part determines the size of the grid. Now, having determined the size of the grid, we now have to do a for next loop to work through every cell in the grid and set its background colour. So 
So we'll need to have two variables set up. So the next thing to do is to work out is the row we're on one of the ones we wish to colour? Because we only wish to colour each alternate row. Now we can use the mod function in this one to work out that quite easily. Since long r is our row count, if long r divided by 2 equals 0, then we can use this to determine whether we want to draw or not draw the background colour. So how do we actually draw the colour itself? Well, since we're using the Z setting, um, it sets up an array for us into which we can put an override for the standard background colour of the grid. So again, we're going to use the send message command to perform that function. We're actually going to set the background colour for each row in the grid. Because we may have been inserting or taking rows away from the grid, um, there's no guarantee that a row is going to be a particular background colour. So we will set the background colour to the ordinary white colour or an alternative colour for each second row. So what colours can we set this to? If we have a look at the My Little Grids Include file, which ships with the application, it lets you know which colours are at default. There are effectively 16 different colour slots set up in the application. Slot 0 is white, slot 1 is black, and the other ones have different colours preset. Now you can override these, but we'll cover that in a moment. So what we need to do then is we need to do a send message to our each grid as we did before, and what we're actually putting in here is a set format override command. The additional parameters we need to send using our make long are the row and the column. And an additional parameter at the end will be the color we wish to set it to. Now we're telling it we want to set the background color and the final piece of information is the slot number you wish to use. Now we're using slot 0, and slot 0 in this case is white. So that's fine for this row. What we'll do for the other row is exactly the same, but we'll use a different slot number. Now let's try slot number 4. And let's see what that does. So we change that to 4. So what we're doing in this routine is we're first of all determining the size of the grid. How many rows and how many columns. And then for each cell on the grid, from 1 to the maximum number of rows and from 1 to the maximum number of columns, we're determining whether the row number is divisible by 2. If it is divisible by 2 with no remainder, then we're setting the background colour to slot 0, which is white. If there is a remainder, then we're setting the background colour to slot 4, which in this case, slot 4 is green. So if we try running a code now... Ah, I have mistyped the constant. Let's try that. And there we are. Now the green is probably a little garish, it's probably a bit too dark for what we're after, but it has actually done what we want, and it's done it on both grids. So let's pick a different colour, maybe something a little lighter. Now if we have a look at the colour equates that we have available, there are quite a number of different colours. But as we saw in here, there are only 15 odd slots you can actually use to set them. However, one thing you can do is you can set your own color in one of the slots. So what we'll do up here is we'll put an extra line of code in, again using send message, 
and what we're doing in here is we want to set the background cell color and we're going to try changing slot number four which at the moment slot number four is the color green and we're going to change that to a different color now we can look down the colors we've got here so let's try something lighter in the greens something a little more like this let's try aquamarine right so if we try that now that's a much more appealing color so you can experiment with your colors to see which one suits you best but you can see it highlights the rows very much more effectively than just the plain white so it's a very easy change to make your grids more colorful and more usable and while it doesn't affect the functionality of the code it does give you more options for a better display that's it for today thank you for watching